if you've been living under a rock these past few months, you may not have heard of the great adaptation of The Last of Us by HBO. In the series, we see some of our favorite game scenes being replicated almost identically, bringing the small nuances of the new actors, but still conveying the same feelings we had while playing. I think we all agree that the first season of The Last of Us is a great season, with a few caveats like the pacing of some episodes at the end and the slightly distorted sense of time throughout the protagonist's journey. It seems like traveling mostly only on foot from the east coast to the west coast of the United States took only a week, right? But aside from that, something important that is lost when adapting a video game is interactivity. I know, I know, it's a well-worn topic, but let me explain. In 2013, there weren't many games, especially AAA, that cared so much about telling stories through their setting. I won't talk about immersive sims on PCs, because I never had the chance to play classics like Deus Ex and System Shock. Dead Space 2 from 2011 shows a ruined and monster-infested space station, with some rooms and environments where you can catch glimpses of what it was like to live here before everything went to hell. Red Dead Redemption from 2010 is perhaps one of the best examples of its time, Bioshock from 2007 as well, but none of these games, or almost none, had such a focus on these elements as The Last of Us had, a few years later. Being able to calmly explore the rooms and understand more about people's lives through the scenery was something very different for me. It may seem obvious and common today, but in 2013, video games, especially big productions, didn't leave much room to breathe. The idea that the player should never be bored, or that the game should always be fun, was the subject of lectures and more lectures at GDC. The Last of Us itself suffers from this too, with rooms full of enemies every 5 minutes for your entertainment. <coughs> Dear Aster, the poetic and contemplative mod for Half-Life 2 asks the question, what if we remove all weapons from a first-person shooter game? It was one of the first games to bring the emerging genre of walking simulators to the surface. Well, very timidly to the surface. It was only in 2012, with the official release of Dear Esther as a game and no longer a mod, and soon in 2013 with Gone Home, that the genre got in the spotlight. At the time, a genre loved by few and hated by many. Not even considered a video game by gamer gators, that means reactionaries supposedly because of its lack of deeper mechanics, besides walking, and the lack of failure conditions. Walking simulators emerged as a pejorative name, but over time, acceptance increased, and games like Firewatch, What Remains of Edith Finch, Stanley Parable, and Gone Home itself are acclaimed by critics and audiences alike, and were instrumental for games like Uncharted 4, a AAA action and adventure game having so many calm and contemplative moments, where its creators directly cite Gone Home as the main influence. The genre came to show that video games don't always need to rely on gunfire, explosions, and guts to tell their stories, not even on puzzles. Sometimes video games just need a good story. Some of my favorite scenes and the ones I most remember from The Last of Us are the calm scenes. Moments of conversation and reflection, petting a giraffe, or exploring scenarios and understanding through the scars of that place, it's history. These possibilities of connections, understanding the world at your own pace, is something that is lost almost entirely in the adaptation. And that's okay, this is not a criticism of the series, they are very different mediums. That is a great example of all of this that I'm talking about in the game, it's right after we meet Henry and Sam. One of the most impactful parts for me in the game is the moment in the sewers. Arriving at the beach, we see a shipwrecked boat, and in it we find a letter from a man named Ish. A man who lived for a long time at sea and was surprised to find a much more devastated world than he imagined. In the nearby sewers, he built his dwelling and hid from the monsters. Shortly thereafter, he ended up finding other people and together they formed a community, protected from the outside world. In this place we see a kind of school, a water collection system, toys, lodgings, among other well-crafted and efficient survivor methods. This community thrived, even in a hostile and scary environment. But as we witness the aftermatch of this society, we arrive to see the result of a tragedy. In each of the rooms, we can understand the history of this place, imagine how these people lived and related to each other, and also how everything ended. One of the strongest moments for me is exploring one of the improvised rooms in the sewers, where we can see the body of an adult and three children under the covers. We know why they died, and what their life was like here, even without direct exposure besides the letters. Our imagination can visualize everything that happened here. 
this moment in The Last of Us is one of the most important to me, one of the reasons why I like this game so much. In the series, there is a small homage to this story, with a room where some of the items and children's painting on the walls appear, as well as the names of Danny and Ish. We talked a lot about how the show enriches the game. This is one of those instances where the game enriches the show. We just couldn't tell the story in the show. There was just no way to do it. But we wanted to honor that this place existed, and it felt like there's a way to reflect back on these characters and the journey they're going through now, especially where the kids lived here. And like you saw Sam sketching and drawing stuff before, now you could imagine there would have been like a dozen kids here, and now they're all gone. It's like these two almost like parallel dimension of the same story lived side yeah. by side and kind of help talk to one another and enrich the other. The world of The Last of Us is meticulously constructed to convey specific emotions. The way nature reclaims places, water and rain transforming architecture, moss and plants invading streets and windows, and so many other elements. Everything in this world obsessively adheres to the reality it creates. Even the monsters require an explanation and obey these rules. Each stage of the fungus evolution must be respected. The same goes for the tutorials, all of which are seen through narrative, in iconic moments such as when we first enter an infected area and there is a man on the ground with a broken mask, trapped in the rubble. He knows he's going to turn into one of those monsters and begs Joe to kill him before that happens. This is when this message appears. In a brief tutorial, you understand the harsh consequences of this world, imposed by a moral choice, and at the same time, you learn a basic mechanic, shooting. Everything in The Last of Us exists to strengthen the relationship between these characters. The world needs to be believable, as do the threats within it, so that the credibility of the people on the screen is conveyed to the controller and the mind of the person experiencing this world with them. An incessant connection between narrative, characters, world building, and the player. Telling stories through the environment is not unique to our media, but being able to explore and interact with these places at your own pace is. Stories that don't need to be told aloud, stories that are spread throughout the space around you. In 2013, this was not so common, especially in big games. The Last of Us realized its world in a grandiose way, never betraying it, even if it meant sacrificing the player's enjoyment, even if it was boring or uncomfortable. In 2023, we are still far from a AAA game without any combat. Not that The Last of Us would be a better game without combat, although a little less combat would be good for it. But it's about the difficulties of the world contrasting with its calmer moments. That's why the result of what was built in 2013 is a much slower and more methodic story by the standards of the time. And this was essential to The Last of Us' main goal, to understand and connect with Joe and Ellie, to feel empathy for them. And the rest of this story, we already know. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. We are a Brazilian video game channel working to bring our videos to English. So thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.